gratia plena. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish for the Funeral Mass of Edwina Hutton. At this time, we ask that you take a moment to silence your phones. Thank you. Our presider this morning is Father Cecil Critch, and would you kindly stand now for the procession.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone. We gather here today with Awina's family, husband Hubert, her children David and Tanya, Rhonda, Des, Hubert Jr., grandchildren AJ and Adam, siblings Francis, Rosemary, Sharon, and Paul, business associates, all the relatives and friends, those here and those watching on live stream. We welcome all of you here today. At the very beginning of our, of our Mass today, we reflect on Edwina's baptism. And in baptism, Edwina was given a share in the death and resurrection of Christ. She was clothed with the garment of salvation. As we gather today to celebrate the mystery of our faith, let us praise the Lord Jesus Christ, who has raised us to new life in baptism. Our entrance hymn this morning can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 650, This Day God Gives Me, 650. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us together throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sin, let us pray asking God to gather Edwina to himself. And let us pray. O God Almighty Father, our faith professes that your son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Edwina, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Please be seated for our readings from Scripture, and our first reader is Rhonda. A 
A reading from the book of Proverbs. A capable wife. Who can find her? She's far more precious than jewels. She opens her hand to the poor, and her hand goes out to the needy. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Her children rise up and call her happy. Her husband, too. And he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpassed them all. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to Psalm 25 can be found on page 16 in the Catholic Book of Worship. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, I lift my soul. Second reader, Tanya. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out as a libation. 
and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The word of the Lord. According to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I'm the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We gather today in sadness, but with great faith and hope with Edwina's family and friends here as we commend Edwina to the grace and mercy of the Lord. We gather also to pray and support Hubert and the family in their time of grief and to encourage each other with the assurances of faith and the resurrection of Christ the Lord in the power of his love. Hubert and family, we the parishioners of St. John the Baptist Cathedral Parish and the people gathered here today lift you up today in prayer that God will give you comfort and peace in your loss. Edwina's death brings to a closure a time of illness and suffering in which she carried her cross with dignity and grace and the sure and certain hope that Jesus who suffered and died for her and for the salvation of the world helped carry the burden of her cross with the love and compassion of Hubert and the family and friends I'm sure. The love that she gave to all of you in her life, you gave back to her in this journey of illness. We gather today to thank God for the gift of the wonderful life of Irina, a faithful Catholic woman whom people respected for her kindness, integrity, and generosity, who in her life was a loving daughter and sister, devoted wife, mother, and grandmother, in her chosen vocation to family life. At baptism, as we said earlier, Irina began her journey of faith she received the light of Christ. When the priest traced the sign of the cross on her forehead, and as the water flowed over her head three times in the name of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Christ placed his own seal on her soul 
a mark that cannot be washed away or removed as a child of God. And now Edwina has begun a new life in Christ and in the embrace of the Father's eternal love. And that is why we have so many baptismal symbols at our funeral mass, the white garment of baptism, the Easter candle at every baptism, Christ, the light of the world, and the blessing with water. You know, each of us was made in the image and likeness of God, and each of us is a gift to the world. And so each day we open that gift of ourselves for others, as Edwina did. And Edwina was a gifted person in many ways. She was, and I read some of the comments and talking to the family and looking at the obituary. She was a true sports enthusiast. She played basketball very well, I was told. She loved figure skating, tennis, and of course, hockey. You had to love hockey with Hubert. She was often seen in the stands, ever the supportive hockey wife, mom, and grandmother. And I was told that Edwina was the heartbeat of the Atlantic Business Magazine and was well regarded for her professionalism and her leadership and knowledge of business. Online, Debbie Gollop, a former employee, says online, and I'm quoting her, Edwina was a down-to-earth kind of person, one who I had the privilege of knowing and working for at Atlantic Business Magazine. I will miss this beautiful lady whom I respected like my other mom. And that tells you something. Antonia told me yesterday that the defining word that best describes her mom was kindness. Eileen Hannon says online, and I quote, my heart aches for all the Hutton family at the loss of such a beautiful person. Edwina was all that a lady should be, kind, compassionate, loving, always willing to help. The obituary says that Edwina loved life to the full, was accomplished and incredibly generous. She was rocked for her family and friends, providing unwavering support and love throughout her life. Leslie Searle online writes, and I quote, she was such a vibrant woman, both in business and personality. My memories of Edwina are either playing tennis or walking, running, or running the Rennies River trails, fit and fast and family oriented and kind. A beautiful quote here from Ryan Hurley, a nephew, writes, and I quote, Aunt Edwina will absolutely be missed by those who knew her. When I was younger, she always had an interest in my sports and how I was doing, and that transitioned into how both my daughter and I are doing. She always asked about my daughter. It made me feel very good inside. I remember seeing Aunt Edwina hard at work at the office for Atlantic Business Magazine, but always making time to engage and see how I was doing Caring for others was something embedded deep within her and certainly was a part of her. Our beautiful first reading from the Jewish scriptures from Proverbs speaks about the capable wife, her qualities, and of course when you read them, you can see that in Edwina, all these qualities. She is more precious than jewels. She was a woman of principle, a good steward of resources, placing her family first, strong in body, mind, and spirit, was wise and trusted by her husband, a good cook, always generous to the poor, a strength and dignity in her clothing, she was well-dressed, a good businesswoman. In the obituary line, it says that Edwina lived a life filled with passion, who loved fiercely, danced joyfully, and was an exceptional cook and gardener. Her love for her family was unconditional. She was a rock for her family, supporting and loving them all through life. Her love for her husband, Hubert, was boundless. He was her partner in both work and life for 62 years. She loved, he loved Edwina and lived out their married vows in good times and in bad, in sickness and health, loving and honoring each other for as long as both shall live. I can tell this for a fact. When every morning each Sunday at 11 a.m. Mass, you would find Hubert and Antonia here in the first pew at the church at the Basilica praying for Edwina, bringing Holy Communion, the body of Christ, back home to her every Sunday. Thank you for that great witness to sacrificial love. Today we reflect on the promise that as Christians we believe that in death life is changed, not ended. We hear that in our preface at the Mass. We recall that Jesus proved how precious and valuable each one of us is to him and how much he loved us when he died for us and rose again and has prepared a place for his faithful people with him in the Father's house. Our joy in heaven will consist in being continually in his loving presence. Jesus also told us that in order that each of us to be a follower of his, 
this past Sunday's reading, we take up our cross daily and follow him. Edwina certainly endured the cross in her life courageously enduring her final illness. As Christians, we believe our vocation, what gives meaning to our lives, what we are born for is to embrace God's love and reflect that love back to the world. That reflection of God's love is at the heart of a Christian life. And we will be judged not by how much money we have or the possessions we have accumulated, but how we have loved others by practical everyday ways, how we have been a light in the darkness for others. As we see Edwina end her earthly journey, a journey leading her back to the Father, we know that in the words of St. Paul to Timothy, Edwina has fought the good fight. She has finished the race, she has kept the faith. Now there is in store for her her crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give her and reward her on that day when they meet face to face. May she live forever in the place to prepare for her in the Father's house. Amen. Let us stand now for our prayers of intercession, our prayers of the faithful, and our intercessor is Sharon. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his people. Confident that God hears the voice of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. In baptism, Edwina received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our sister Edwina was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the tent. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you, O Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Edwina seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, dispel the darkness, and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray in our sister, Edwina. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our creator and redeemer, by your power, your only son has conquered death and has passed from this world into your kingdom. Grant that our sister Edwina may share his triumph over death and enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now for the second part of our Mass, the Offertory and Eucharist part. And uh, we call forward our gift bearers, Rosemary and Dr. Dick.
my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Edwina, may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. So with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise. As without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, the people of God, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember your servant, Edwina, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in the resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially Edwina's family, Josephine and Kevin, Joan and Rob and brother-in-law, Jack Hurley. Welcome all of them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. baptized children of God in the family of God we pray now in the words that Jesus taught us our Father, Father who art, art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil and deliver us Lord we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days that by the work, the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, the people of God. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share that peace of Christ now with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world grant us peace Behold the Lamb of
of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my room, room, but only but say only the say word, the and my soul, soul shall be healed. And for Holy Communion, we'll wait until we have our ushers in place here. And uh, we'll have two communion ministers here in the front and two in the middle. Our communion hymn can be found on page 603 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Gift of Finest Wheat, 603. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. You satisfy the hungry heart. Sweet, come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with a gift of finest wheat. Come, the gift to us, O saving Lord. Joyful lips we sing to you all praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly food. You satisfy the hungry heart. to eat. Come the gift to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat.
Please stand and let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Edwina may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now. I used to call on Hubert Jr. to come forward, please. Good morning. It's great to see so many familiar faces and many new ones as we gather today to celebrate the life of our mother, grandmother, sister, friend, and wife, Edwina. As my brothers and sisters David, Tonya, and Rhonda pave the way for me in life, being the baby or run to the family, they have bestowed upon me the honor of delivering today's eulogy. They certainly softened mom and dad up for me so I could skate through life with less oversight and loosening of the rules, but then stuck me with the public speaking gig. Great, you guys are the best. I will not stand before you today and deliver a historical resume for Edwina from birth to passing and all things in between, for while appropriate for some, it seems less our speed as a family. We felt it was important to speak less about accolades and accomplishments, while many, and speak more about the person. It is hard to come up with one adjective that would describe my mother as she was as elite an individual as you could find. I simply cannot remember a day or time when she mailed it in and didn't approach a day with vigor and a can-do attitude that delivered will-do results. As a mother and grandmother, she was fair and firm, but always in your corner. She saw the big picture when we did not, and while those decisions she made might have put us off or frustrated us at the time, that was a reflection of our inexperience and a testament to her wisdom. As a sister, she was one of seven Walt's children, and she was very close with each one of them. While not the oldest, I felt that she was the proverbial quarterback of the family. Every sibling was part of the process that is life, but it was like she was the straw that stirred the lemonade. Family was extremely important, and Walt's gatherings were always aplenty. As a friend, she was loyal to a fault. Not unlike her commitment to her children and siblings and grandchildren, she was always there for her friends, always had time for her friends, would bend over backwards for her friends. As a wife, dad made out pretty good. Running the family was a typical division of labor. At home, mom was VP of operations and dad was VP of facilities management. Dad did not want for much. Professionally, dad had an entrepreneurial spirit which mom eventually took on as well. With any entrepreneur, if you're not making mistakes, you are not learning. And dad made a few. Not many, but a few. Okay. I remember there was one time being young and not knowing the specifics of a perhaps entrepreneurial folly, I had asked mom what was troubling her. She proceeded to tell me that it's nothing to wor worry about, but if I could put your father on a slow boat to China right now, I would. <laughs> Dad wasn't much for the, for the open water, so said boat excursion didn't occur, but you get where her head was at. That said, they obviously got through it all, one step, one minute, one day at a time, and had a great marriage. So with the efficiency that Edwina had in managing all, as all aspects of life, I will honor her by bringing the send-off to a succinct close. Mother, grandmother, sister, friend, wife, forever in our thoughts. How are you? Ask our cross and candles now to come forward and please stand.
Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Edwina, and now we come to the last farewell. There is part sadness and parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Edwina again and enjoy our friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. In baptism, Edwina shared in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. May she be welcomed into the glory of eternal life. And our holy water represents her baptism. As a sign of respect for our sister, Edwina, we let this incense rise to God. Incense is a part of the ritual, this came from the Jewish ritual of burials. Incense is the inside plants, the Middle Eastern plants, the resin. And as it rises to God, it's a sign of our prayers rising to God. So as a sign of respect for Edwina, we let this incense rise to God, who has called her to share in the glory of God. Edwina, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him. We give you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed upon Edwina in this life. They are signs to you of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and open the gates of paradise to your servant. And help us to remain to comfort one another with the assurance of our faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister Edwina forever. On behalf of the family, I'd like to thank all of you for your presence here today. The beautiful music is from Patty up here and Alma Singleton, Katie Sullivan and Dominic Green, our instrumentalists, and other members of Ronaldo and Ronald, the Hutton family. Beautiful music. Thank you so much. It added so much today. Thank all those who participated in the Mass. Pat and Grania Baker for their planning of the liturgy with the family. Thank all of you for your presence, all the Basilica helpers who help in so many ways uh, during our Masses every, every day. So thank you again for your kindness. And all the people who have helped the family in any way, thank you. Dear friends, may every mark of affection, every gesture of friendship that you give to others be a sign of God's peace for you. In peace and the sure certain hope of the resurrection, we take leave of the remains of our sister, knowing that one day we shall be with her in heaven. And may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God.
who dwell in the shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for life. Say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust, and he will raise you on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. The snare of the Never capture you, and famine will bring you no fear. Under his wings, your refuge, his faithfulness, your shield, and he will raise you up on eagles' wings. to shine like the sun.